come over for quite a while. And yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. We've only watched it a, few, a couple of months ago, one, one or two months ago. And yeah, so I'll just jump straight in and sort of show you how it works. So when you come in for the first time, um, so you can access it from the manage menu, just go down to power mode. And in order to actually start using it, you just click on the create filter link on the left here. And here, uh, you're in the actual create filter page. So I'll just briefly go over um, how this is laid out. So there's two main sections. Uh, the top one is kind of the data source, which is basically the, the type of people that you're looking for. So you can kind of select people who you're currently following and who, who are not following you. And then down the bottom, you've got other additional optional criteria. So this is ways you can additionally uh, reduce that list. But just in a very basic view, I just sort of give you a bit more of a, a demo of how this is working. So uh, for a basic example, I might select uh, users I'm following who are not following me. And I can click show matches and immediately it will just run that search on my account. So what that's done is it's brought up the 2,049 people that I'm not following. Um, and this matches exactly the people on the um, on the unfollow page. You can see the exact it's the exact same number here. Um, so get back to power mode. So for example, I could do that again. So I could do users you're following, users not following you. And if I go to show matches, and then do save, and I could do something like. Uh, Users, I'm not following. And so I've immediately created this filter um, that shows you shows me all the users who I'm not following. And what that means is if I come back to this page, um, I've always got this filter immediately available. So it's kind of like going to the unfollow page. You've got this immediate filter. And so I basically recreated this filter, uh, the default managed filter filter on the left. Now the reason why I'd want to do something like this is um, I can then apply additional criteria on top. Um, so for example, I can do something like I, I want to find all the users who I'm not following, uh, but I also want to limit that list to only people who I've followed in the past, um, say, seven days. So if I go and reduce this to seven days. So what I've done here is I've gone to the additional optional criteria list. And I found the users who um, who have followed me, and I reduced that down to seven days. And if I go show matches, I can see that it's updated that list and it's brought it down to seven. And um, and then I can save it. And so now if I come back to this page again, I've got this list of users who I'm not following, and it's filtered down to only users I followed in the past seven days. Um, and um, yeah, that, that's it. That's kind of a core overview of the, of the service. Um, I'll go into a bit more depth um, about how some people tend to use it. Um, so one of the core ways lots of people use it is finding users um, who, who don't follow you back. Um, So, for example, in this case, I did uh, users who um, who are not following me back, who I followed in the past seven days. Quite often, people want to do this the other way around. So they'll set this filter to be um, seven days. And so basically, what I've done here is I've selected only the people who I follow beyond seven days. And uh, I can bring this up. And so I now I've got this whole list of people, and I give them kind of uh, a substantial amount of time to follow me back. Um, and uh, and it makes me it makes it very easy for me to see I guess that that list of users. Um, I can also um, do things like uh, adding in criteria on the number of followers they have. So if I set it to be something like um, one thousand, so what I've done here is I've also added in uh, criteria for the um, for the maximum number of followers I, they can have. So there might be some people who I'm following who have a lot of followers who are probably not going to follow me back. And by adding in a criteria uh, that limits uh, the number of followers they have, that uh, that creates quite a good use case for people who I might want to unfollow. 
And so here I'm just going to save those changes. And so now whenever I come back to this list of users I'm not following, um, it's going to have these additional criteria attached. And yeah, so you see that's a really fast way to use the service. So instead of having to kind of go to the unfollow page and um, do all kinds of ordering and sort of manually review each account, we can just simply set up filters under the power mode uh, filter. And you can set up a whole bunch here. You can set up um, 50, 100. There's no limit on the number of filters you can set up. And it makes managing your account much, much faster. Um, and it just means each day you can kind of come in and you go through it and you just click on follow on each of these accounts. Uh, there's also the batch select mode. Um, so this works just the same way as it does on the other on the other pages. Um, so for example, here I could go um, and select all of these people I've identified um, as potential follows, and I can save them then to unfollow later. Uh, so I'll just run that search. And yeah, so you can see here um, I've saved these accounts for manual following. Um, I can go to my process page if I want to actually action them. Um, or I could send them to a remote account management, which I'll go through a little bit later. James, why don't um, you, um, James, can you hear me? Yep. Um, when you finished up on that section, why don't you backtrack a bit just to the generic follow, unfollow, and just clarify the batch select just in specific. So if you just, if you just show people how you can see who, um, is not following back, and then why they would use the batch select and not batch select. Yeah, sure thing. Um, and also, if people have any other questions of the stuff I'm talking about, feel free to send it through on the, the question side. Yeah, please send um, your questions so, through in the question in the question section. Question panel. Yeah. Question panel. Um, so, a brief overview of the unfollow uh, follow features. So, this is kind of the core feature that a lot of people use Manage Flutter for. Um, so you might want to do this because um, you want to reduce your, improve your ratio, your Twitter ratio. Um, so what I mean by that is you want to have um, the number of people who uh, who you follow, uh, you generally want that less than the number of people who follow you. Um, it's a pretty good signal to a lot of people that, um, that you're a high value account. Uh, it also helps if you're following a large number of people to, to avoid uh, Twitter's uh, spam filters and getting suspended. Um, so generally, we recommend uh, keeping this the number of people uh, you follow lower than the number of followers. Um, so a good way to do that is to use our unfollow tools. So if I go back to the unfollow page, um, I can find people, for example, who are inactive. Uh, I've identified uh, 341 people who are inactive. And I can go through and um, unfollow them. Um, but instead of actually clicking through all of them individually, we have this batch select option. Now, we can't do this uh, automatically for you, unfortunately. Uh, Twitter have um, changed their terms of service uh, late last year, and they basically stopped uh, stopped us from doing any kind of bulk actions uh, in terms of actually doing unfollowing. So every single unfollow or follow had to be clicked on individually, um, although we do have some service that can help you. So for example, with batch select mode, if I turn that on, um, I can immediately select all of those 341 people um, uh, some of them have been excluded because they're already saved for processing. Um, James, um, go here and so there's the 262. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. The, the, there's a question that's come through from Andy. We would like to unfollow by location. For example, anyone not in Florida, can that be done? Um, hmm, that's a good question. Hmm. No, not currently. <laughs> um, it actually, it's, it's quite a good use case, though. It's, it's, it would be useful for us to add something like that. Um, it's a little hard to identify where accounts are from, so we couldn't do something that's 100% accurate. Um, but we could potentially create a tool that um, allows people to um, at least get some indication of sort of where their time zone is set or something along those lines. We do have the tools that uh, allow you to unfollow people based on their um, where their, their language is set. Um, so this tool comes up with, if you set your language to say French, it will say non-French, because um, Kevin's got his to set English, it says non-English. Um, so this identifies all the people who have set their language to something other than yours. Um, but currently, no, we don't have everything based on location. Andy, thanks for the question. Any other questions, please either raise your hand or just send it through. Thanks, James. You can continue. 
So back to the inactive filter. So um, say I select all these accounts, um, I can then go and save them for processing. And um, what I can do then is go to the process page. You can also access it from the top here. And uh, I basically got this list of people who I know I want to follow. Um, the reason I'd want to do this is um, it's much faster to kind of uh, select all the people and then just have them all in one list um, to, to process. So I could just sit here then and just click the unfollow button and it runs pretty quickly. I've got all those people saved into a single list um, that I can action quite quickly. Um, the alternative reason you'd want to do this is um, for pro users, uh, we have the remote account management available. Um, I might briefly jump into this since it's probably a good time. So remote account management works by, um, by allowing people to kind of outsource that clicking to us. Um, so we know it can get kind of tiring clicking through these, these accounts. Um, so we actually have account managers that, that will do that for you. Um, and um, I'll go to the Roan Account Management page and show you what that looks like. Uh, James, um, got another question yep. coming through. Mm -hmm. um, sure. Can we, back to the unfollowing, can we unfollow by a keyword search in the last tweet? For example, anyone using profanity, we would want to segment and unfollow. Uh, yes, probably. That's a good question. We've only just recently rolled out the tweet sort of stuff, like literally in the past week. So uh, this is it's going to be experimental, but just bear with me. Andy, uh, Andy, you're throwing say, the, the good questions our way. <laughs> so say I really didn't like pizza, um, which, I, which I do. I do like pizza, but say I didn't. Um, let me try uh, users you're following. So I'm just trying to run a search now currently. Um, I'm guessing, um, because pizza is a fairly common word, it's probably not going to come out back with a huge number of results. Um, I should probably try a different one. I'll just see what this comes up with. You might want to try something like Melbourne or yeah. Sydney. Yeah, that's a good one. I'll just cancel this one. It should show me the partial results. Yeah, and I'll do a, um, I'll create a new one. Sydney, is it your following? So what this is doing is essentially it's searching Twitter for all the people who have uh, recently mentioned uh, Sydney, and it's then correlating them with people who I'm following. And so it's going to give me a list of just people who I'm following that mention that keyword. Um, it only works on the most recent 1,500 tweets. Um, so that's as far back as we can access from Twitter. Uh, we are in the, in the process of actually rolling out uh, this on BioSearch as well. So hopefully in the next month uh, or couple of weeks even, we'll have another, uh, another filter in there that allows you to actually search against their, their profile. Um, currently, you can do it only on the most recent tweet. So we'll just see if this comes up then. Uh, OK, cool. So it's identified these five people. It's basically, in these, for the, each of these five people, their most recent tweet uh, would have included the word Sydney. Um, and they're people who I'm currently following. And to say I really had to vendetta against Sydney <laughs> for some reason, then I could, yeah, I could just go in and follow these people later. Um, I could also save this filter. Um, so I say I want to call it something like people who mention Sydney. And so now I've got this uh, power filter here. So basically every time I log in, I can just go straight to this filter um, and it's going to show me all the recent people who have mentioned that keyword. Um, so it's a very easy way to kind of build those, uh, build those tools up. And, um, and every time you sort of think of a criteria like that, you can just save it as a, as a power mode filter. And so you can imagine kind of building up, uh, you know, quite a range of criteria, like just like we have on the main or follow pages, you can have your own kind of customized list of criteria that are sort of relevant to you, who you want to unfollow or potentially follow. James, I'm, I'm going to um, unmute Andy because Andy seems very happy with that answer. And I want to just, I want to get some input from him as to why he's asking these questions and um, sure. his particular use cases might be useful for some of the other users and for us. Andy, you're up. Hey, thank you guys. Uh, that's a very cool feature there. I'll explain what we use it for. Uh, we, we're based in the South Florida market. I, by, by the by nature, I'm an online consultant for the last uh, 10, 12 years. 
but we started using Manage Flitter to grow the social media network in the South Florida market. Primarily, our business model is to promote small to medium-sized businesses. So while we encourage all followers, somebody from California or Australia is not going to be receptive to us to receiving a tweet from us about a small shop in Miami, for example. So we, we have grown our account uh, and we would basically spend several hours a day by hand in removing people that are not in the South Florida market, adding people that are in the Florida market, and adding basically business owners. So by nature on Twitter though, when people send out retweets, they go all, all over the world and we get followers and we get people that come into our account. We would like to segment those users out so that we can have room to continue to grow the account. Um, as it is now, our account is, is there on the edge. So we, in that, in that example you showed, James, that was great because I can actually enter in there a search for tweet for, uh, again, nothing offensive about kids, but people that are kids that are, you know, 10, 11 years old that are using language on our feed or language in our network, we really would like to have those removed. Andy, thank you. And I'm gonna um, I'm I'm gonna mute you, and I'm gonna bring in um, I'm gonna bring in Dave Zariety, who's got some comments and maybe a different um, approach. Dave, you're up. Hang on. Dave, are you with us? Let me just. Dave, hello, hello. Struggling to unmute you, Dave. Anyway, Dave, I'm, I'm going to try unmute Dave. Um, unmute Dave. Okay, for whatever reason, it's not coming through. But Dave made the comment, um, you could use keywords to find followers of yours that may tweet on a criteria that you want in a follower, and you could whitelist these accounts. So using the whitelisting, that could also be another way to um, 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 whitelist them. Dave, apparently you've self-muted, so we can't unmute you. So if you unmute yourself, we can chat to you. Um, but let's continue. Thanks for the questions and the comments, guys. Please keep them coming. Um, James, where were we? Uh, sure, I'll just go back to remote account management because it actually uh, leads on to an interesting way you can actually use these rules. Um, so remote account management is um, is our service that allows you to actually outsource these actions to us. Um, so basically what you can do is you can build up a balance of actions. Um, and when I say actions, I mean things like unfollows, follows or blocks uh, that you can then send to us. And um, we currently have introductory pricing. We're, we will change this in the future, but currently it's uh, $1 USD per thousand actions performed uh, with a minimum um, $10 payment. And so say you can select uh, $10 and you can get 10,000 actions. And what that means is you can then send 10,000 unfollows or follows to us and we will process them for you. Um, and so this means it's done in a way that complies with Twitter to, Twitter's terms of service. You're not breaking their rules. Um, there's no automation going on. These are sort of real humans sitting there doing the clicking for you. Um, and yes, yeah, so for example, in Kevin's case, where um, uh, where I'd added all of these uh, these accounts to the processing page uh, because he's got credit in his balance, I could then send those actions to remote account management. And it means instead of him sitting there and clicking them individually, um, it will um, uh, if it'll one of one of our account managers will do it will do it for him. Um, so at this point, I could uh, click agree, and it will go in and uh, process his actions. Uh, you can also set a rate limit, so you can say I only want to do sort of uh, ten follows a day and maybe a hundred unfollows, um, and then that will uh, will only apply um, the actions on your account based on that rate limit. Um, in the near future, we'll also be adding in um, kind of a trickling effect as well. Um, so it would allow you to kind of spread those actions out throughout the day. We've, we've had some people request that. Um, and again, all this stuff is compliant with Twitter's terms of service. There's no black hat stuff going on here. It's all humans doing the actual actions. Um, but uh, back to how this is actually useful uh, once we've created the, if we're using the rules from Palmo, um, if I 
go back to remote account management. So we've just recently added this additional um, additional service called remote account management rules, and this op operates very similarly similarly to how uh, power, power mode works. Um, so for example, I can add an unfollow rule, and I can do something very similar to what I just did on Kevin's account. So I can do a tweet search for say um, Sydney again, and I can save this rule. And what it's going to mean is it's going to, uh, what it means is it's going to, it's just running the search now, but it will continually keep searching the Twitter stream for people who mention Sydney, um, and if Kevin's currently following them, it will unfollow them on his account. I don't want to activate this. Um, and yeah, so basically it's just a very uh, quick way. It means it's, uh, it means you can set up all these rules. So not only can you set them up through power mode um, if you want to do the actions yourself, but you can actually set them up in rules through remote account management. And you only have to set these up once, and they'll just get performed on your behalf. You don't need to worry about it at all. Um, and um, and yeah, that, that's it's a very simple, straightforward way to manage your Twitter account. Um, we also recently added this activity report. Um, so you can see, for example, uh, actions have been performed on Kevin's account. Um, so I had some of follows that were performed uh, a few months ago when it was launched. Um, and we use this, use this quite regularly on a few of our accounts. Um, we've got a, quite a few large accounts who just started using it as well. Uh, for example, if you've got sort of a large number of people who say you want to um, unfollow everybody who doesn't follow you and you don't want to have to do any more management for it, you can literally just save this rule um, and activate it and all those people will be, uh, be unfollowed from your account. So yeah, it's a great way to, um, to basically outsource all those actions to us. Um, and again, yeah, all compliant with Twitter's terms of service is kind of our, uh, our, our tool that, um, that that works within those rules. Um, so yeah, James? It's, it's kind of um, yep. Thanks. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. Um, a couple of things because um, we are heading to the end of the official time, so I just want to get a few things in. But we are happy to happy to stay on our end. Um, Andy said he live tested the unfollow filter by keyword on our account. It worked great. Huge time saver. Thanks. So uh, this is what the webinar is about. It's just helping helping you guys, our users, um, you know, get better at. Uh, there's often a million ways. It's a very um, elaborate, intricate program that can do all sorts of things, and we learn every day from you guys. So uh, this is what it's about: is teaching each other. I want to just backpedal to Dave Zoraidi about the whitelisting because the whitelisting is quite powerful. Um, let me just see if I can unmute him. Um, Dave, are you with us? Yeah, yeah, is it working? Yep, okay, so let's just backpedal, explain the question and your approach. Let's just recover that a little bit. Yeah. Power okay. mode options and you want to try to find some of these accounts uh, that are, let's say, in the South Florida area. Instead of just Are you breaking people, you... You're breaking up a little Hello? bit, Dave. Okay. Is that working now? Yep. Let's let's start start from the top again. Hopefully, you'll you'll stick with us. Okay. So basically, using power mode instead of just wanting to try to eliminate certain people, you can use the feature to find those accounts that you really you know value, and then whitelist them to make sure that they don't go on your unfollow process. So really that ends up saving you from accidentally unfollowing an account that is very valuable to you. So for, for example, the guy in South Florida, if, if he's to find the accounts that he knows are in the Florida area, he can then whitelist those accounts to make sure that they're not on the unfollow queue and then be able to save them to as a about unfollowing them. Okay, yeah, I and mean, the whitelisting feature is really useful to sort of carve out accounts and keep them in a separate bucket. So no, that was a great, um, great point. Really appreciate that. Thanks, Dave. Any other comments, Dave, about the power mode um, or anything that we've covered or we haven't covered? Yeah, a really, really big one is the copy followers aspect of it. I know that a lot of users want to use copy followers. And then being able to add those additional filters into the copy following feature 
is it's really, really useful when you're searching through accounts that have hundreds of thousands of, of you know, followers. You can really narrow down the criteria and really lock in your target audience okay, by well, followers, I, by that. That's a, that's a great point, James. Um, if we have two minutes, why don't we, why don't we quickly go through um, that feature? Um, and to everyone else listening, um, if you want to ask us anything about Twitter, anything about Manage Flutter, no matter how basic, no matter how concept, uh, um, complex, um, we have a few minutes. Um, we are all here. Please don't be shy. Send your questions through. These questions are great for us, great for the team, and they help everyone else in the webinar. Um, so, James, why don't you, while some of those final questions come through, why don't you run through the copy followers? Thanks, Dave. I'm going to mute you. Sure. Um, uh, so we have copy followers functionality that allows you to um, essentially uh, copy the, uh, the people who follow any other account on Twitter or who any... Uh, followers of any other account or who they follow, so either way around. Um, so this is the copy followers, and this is the copy following, so this is copying the people they follow. Um, so for example, say I want to copy all the followers of um, Manage Flitter's account, for example. Uh, I can go in and I've just selected um, 5,000, this can be the, uh, the 5,000 most recent uh, followers of Manage Flitter. Um, I haven't applied any ordering. Um, I can apply ordering, uh, which runs a little bit more slowly, but allows you to then apply additional filters on top. So I'll just show you that quickly. And so basically what it's doing is going off and requesting the list of followers from, manage, uh, from Twitter. And uh, because I've run this one with ordering, I can then apply things like uh, ordering by tweets. So I could um, maybe I want to go actually spam score is quite a good one. Um, I could make it low. So if I can follow the people with the lowest spam score, um, the most recent followers manage Flutter with the lowest spam score, or I could possibly show uh, by the highest influence. Um, so this is quite a useful tool that quite a lot of people use. Uh, you can also use uh, copy followers inside of Power Mode. Um, so uh, this gives you the ability to um, apply all of the cool filters that Power Mode has on top of copy followers. Um, so, for example, in this case, I'm going to find, uh, I'll just do 1,000 again to keep it fast. Um, 1,000 people who are following Manage Flutter. Um, and let's say I want to only do, um, let's do protected accounts, see what, see what it brings up. So, you might do do verified. I'm not sure if we'll bring up anybody because it's, um, it's only going to show a thousand, um, but we'll just see what it brings up here. Uh, unfortunately, I've just uh, used up the limiter of number of uh, number of followers I can form. This will restart in a second, um, but I'll just go back to my other search in the meantime. Okay, James. When James, when you have a chance of just when you, I've got a couple of other questions. When you, uh, when it's an appropriate time, to yeah, no, now would be a good time. Yeah. Well, okay. So good. Marty Williams, Marty, thanks for your question. Can you talk about the follow and unfollow per day limits for accounts with two thousand plus followers? James, do you want to just give us a quick overview of what we know and what we don't know and what we can uh, say about that? Yeah, sure thing. Um, so this was uh, uh, around the users with um, greater than 2,000 followers, right? Yeah, can you talk uh, about the points. follow and unfollow per day limits for accounts of 2,000 plus followers from what Marty Williams? Okay. okay. Um, so basically the way this works is Twitter has limits on the number of people you can follow um, once you um, follow more than 2,000 people. And uh, we don't have any exact numbers on this. It actually varies by account. Um, but generally, uh, what we find is that the more people who follow you, the more people you'll be able to follow back. So if you, if you have, say, uh, 3,000 followers, uh, you'll probably be able to follow about, uh, I think it's sort of like this sort of range. 
Um, so basically you can only follow a few more people than are following you. And so this makes it quite important for you to actually keep your ratio low. Um, there's also per day limits. Um, we don't have exact numbers for those either because they change all the time. Twitter changes it quite regularly. Um, and also they don't publish any of this information just to kind of stop people from um, you know, abusing the system. Uh, we have uh, done some investigation ourselves and we've, uh, we've implemented some rules into Managed Flutter. So if we see that you're likely to hit up against their suspension limits, then we'll, we'll send you a warning. Um, in general, if you want to play it safe, we recommend only following 100 people a day. Um, we very rarely see people suspended for following 100 people. Um, as you get larger, if you get over sort of about, um, about 5,000, I'd say, um, then um, then you can probably start following about 200 people a day. Um, and again, it's, it's a little bit experimental. Um, but yeah, we don't, um, uh, Twitter's very, very secretive about, about these rules. But the, the, key, the key thing that we tend to recommend is just keep your ratio low. So if you keep on following people um, and, uh, and make it so that you have, uh, uh, so that you're following uh, less people than, um, than follow you, um, it's always the, the best thing to do. It tends to tends to work pretty well. You won't get uh, caught into Twitter's scam filters, and um, and, yeah, and our tools work really well to be able to do that. Our unfollowed rule allows you to unfollow inactive people, people who are who are still likely to continue following you, um, um, even if you unfollow them. Um, so yeah, that's quite a good way to, to do that kind of stuff. James, I'm going to um, I'm going to just see. Um, Marty, who asked the question, has any? I'm going to unmute Marty in case he wants to have any uh, follow-up questions or clarifications. Marty, you unmuted. Do you want to ask anything else? Welcome. Hello. I uh, enjoy the uh, the service a lot. Thank you for all your work on this. Um, just the questions in general. Uh, a little less about you know how many total can you follow? Just you know how many per day? And, and I think James did a good job of that. Um, as you get upwards of say 20,000 that are following you, I assume the numbers continue to open up a little bit up there? Yeah, they definitely do. Um, I mean, again, it's we don't like to quote any numbers because it's very, um, it, it changes all the time and, you know, we actually even find that Twitter does enforce lower limits for some accounts than they do for others. Um, so what we recommend is, is just kind of slowly increasing the number you, you follow um, and if you do, I hit up against any limits, if you do get any warnings from Twitter, then just uh, scale it back. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, if, you, if you don't unfollow this in the same day that you follow it, you can tend to work a little bit better. Um, but yeah, once you hit, hit around 20,000, as you, as you sort, sort of reach 100,000 as well, the limits get very, very abstract. We very rarely see the really large counts getting suspended at all. Um, so there's, um, and particularly if you have quite a good ratio, um, then you'll almost never get suspended if you, if you have less people following. Uh, if you follow less people than are following you, um, it's quite a good way to stay uh, outside of Twitter's radar. Um, so yeah, I know I didn't exactly give you a figure, but that's because um, it's it's very hard. Like if I gave you one, it could change the next day. So I, I don't want to sort of um, say something concrete that people then then use that um, that, that could be wrong. I understand. Well, thank you for your help. Marty, thanks so much. Where are you um, where are you calling in from? Nashville, Tennessee. Ah, uh, it's uh, the home of all the songwriters. Yes. <laughs> nice one. Thank you. I'm going to mute you. Thanks for joining us. Andy's got another question. Um, Andy, I might unmute you if you're still around. Yep, there you are. Um, Andy, you're up. Hey. Hey, I just want to add a comment there on those uh, follow ratios. On our account, now consistently, we go ahead and follow up to uh, 1,000 accounts per day uh, without any issues at all. I think that uh, in our experience over the last several years, engagement is very critical and making sure that you're doing social. In other words, not just follow on follow, but actually have content that is being t tweeted out there and encouraging others to retweet your content. If the number or the percentage of people that are retweeting your content is up, you, your account is like a real account to Twitter, and 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 it's not going to have any issues. You could follow and unfollow, you know, all the way up to their limits. The, the 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 trick there we found is just to be social, answer people, engage people, and just use the actual account. 
Uh, the question I had uh, for James there, James, we did a, a test on the filter. It works fantastic. Uh, I appreciate that it's going to save us a lot of hours of work. Uh, can we separate keywords by commas in that field? Uh, no, currently you can't. Um, at this point, it's only uh, a single keyword uh, for each filter. Um, but yeah, I can I can see why you might want to do multiple keywords in a in a filter. So I'll look into it. I'll see if there's any way that we can implement something like that. Excellent, excellent. And also the last question. I know that we're running out of time here. Uh, is there a limit to the amount of individual filters that can be created? No, there's no limit at all. Uh, once you create more filters than can show on the page, it will just uh, keep scrolling through them. So, no, there's no limit at all. Nice, nice. Hey, guys, again, congrats. You guys have an awesome product there. Thanks, Andy. I'm going to mute you. Um, okay, folks, um, I'm going to do one last shout-out. If uh, anyone wants to raise their hand or ask a question about anything Manage Flutter or Twitter-related, um, now's your chance. Um, we've covered all of the questions. If anyone wants to talk and introduce themselves or say anything, um, raise your hand or ask a question. Um, I appreciate everyone coming into the webinar. Please always remember to, you know, send through tweets and emails. We try to get back to everyone. Sometimes um, things slip by. Don't feel bad about tweeting us or emailing us. Um, again, we work very hard at uh, keeping um, the system solid and and also um, keeping our support solid we've invested in our support and um, I might just um, to say goodbye I might also just um, unmute Chelsea who's Chelsea is also she she helps out with support and Chelsea helps out with customer service she can just uh, introduce herself some of you might um, come across her and your your tweet and um, and and support travels um, Chelsea you are unmuted for travels um, Chelsea, you are unmuted. Thanks for the introduction, Kevin. Uh, hello to everyone worldwide. It's really interesting to see that we've got so many um, managed little users from different countries. Um, want me to sort of say anything else? <laughs> um, Thanks, Chelsea. No, that's that's fine. We're in the same room, so it's a playing a tricky game of mute. One last question from Sam. I'm going to see if Sam's still around so I can actually unmute him and he can ask it himself. Um, Sam, you're online. Welcome. Sam calling Sam, who asked the question about managed flutter packages. Okay, Sam might not have a mic. Um, will Manage Flutter be making a package with more features purely for personal accounts instead of the pro and business accounts mainly aimed at businesses? Sam, we're not really planning on making um, any other packages or any other plans at the moment. We're going to focus on our pro and business plans. Um, but who knows? Um, tell us what you're looking for, and if many people are looking for that, um, we always um, we always open to that. Um, let me see what else um, has come in. I think that's I think that's it. Any hands raised? No hands raised. I think we're going to wrap it up, folks. I think that was a terrific session. We're going to try to do these webinars regularly. We'll probably be doing um, um, we're probably going to be doing it around the same time. I'll see if I can continue to drag James in because um, he's got terrific knowledge of the product. Um, and if you want any specific topics in the webinar, any ideas, tweet us, email us. You know how to get hold of us. Um, and thank you very much for joining us. James, I'm going to unmute you and ask um, for a final word from you as well. Yeah, no, thanks for joining us, everybody. It's been great. Um, yeah, hope you all got something informative out of it. Please, please let us know if you have any other further questions or any topics you want, to, want us to cover in the, the next webinar. We've obviously got quite a lot of uh, new features come out recently. So, yeah, it'd be great for any feedback you have. Just send it through to um, either via Twitter or via our email, our support email. And, yeah, thanks. And if, for those of you that want T-shirts, um, Email us at contact at manage flutter 
www.ecom.com and uh, we'll see what we can do. We're currently out of them, but we'll see what we can do. And uh, Chelsea got a couple of, or one, yay, Chelsea. Um, uh, another question that came through, what is a webinar? I'm not sure. We'll, um, and, and last question, can we do Boolean searches? Um, I, James, I take that, that, that that's a no as well. Okay, I'm getting James's head shake, and I think he's muted himself, but that's a clear head shake from the umpire. Um, okay, um, we've gone past the time. I hope that's been useful from the team in Sydney, from James in Switzerland. Thank you. We loved hearing the voices behind our users. Thanks for all the support. The way you can support us besides having a pro account or a business account is just telling your friends where appropriate. We really appreciate that. We're a small bootstrapped company. We love Twitter. We love Manage Flitter. We love our users. So uh, we'd love to continue helping you. See you next time, folks. Thanks very much. See you later.